Okay, I think my technical issues are resolved. Yeah, that seems to be going fine. All right. Hmm. Enemies in here now. Undead are the easiest things to kill. Theranize gives you an extra chance to do that. As long as, you know, the chain keeps up and the buttons actually work, pretty hard to lose. Uh, easy to get turned around, though. Not at all. The fatty. Are we ready for this? Not sure. Down anyone in my way. Don't know. I don't think we have a chance. <laughs> 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 Seventeen is less than eight. I didn't hit that. I was nowhere near an enemy. That we're finished here. Are we ready for this? I did not hit that, goddammit. Uh, 
a glowy thing. I don't think we have a chance. No mercy. Wounds that will heal. Cut the flesh. Make a way. The glowy thing is nothing. Want to play with you? Yes, I am. No, I didn't miss one. <clears throat> now I get jumped by three ghosts. That boy who called himself Enominot. <laughs> Could he really be Velvet's younger brother? Partly. It could have been an illusion intended to torment her. Don't you agree, Eleanor? I do. Velvet's objective is avenging her brother, after all. We've all seen how strongly she feels about it. I find it hard to believe that the one so dear to her is still alive. I don't know what powers Inominat possesses, but I think that really was her little brother. Velvet was able to see past Melchior's illusions. But look at her now. I just don't want to believe that the real Luffy could do such a thing. Could it be possible that Inominat was reborn into her brother's body? I don't know. But if that was the case, I'm not sure Velvet would be in so much agony. Yes, I guess. Inominat actually being Velvet's brother. It makes a twisted sort of sense. But face. it's too awful. You're too awful. We will need to be come from. What the fuck was that? The phantom inputs are just ridiculous. I mean, it's not like it was going to make or break this fight, but it's still annoying. We're finished here. Like, the further the game goes on, the worse it's getting. Like, the game's degrading. 
Probably should have restarted it when I took that long break. One. Two. One's probably on the other path. And if it's not, who gives a shit? My neck. Not the orb. Is this? Look. <gasps> hey, stay with me. I'll get someone right away. It's okay. I'm tired. Have you been journeying long then? Ten years. My master entrusted everything to me, but I couldn't do anything. Ten years? My wings are weak. It... it doesn't matter anymore. You don't have wings, dude. I see. If you've been working that hard, you surely need a break. I just happened to get my hands on some prickle boar meat. I'll be cooking up a stew for dinner. Would you care to join me? Huh? No, I... All I have on me now is this apple. Here. And was it some apple? Once your belly is full of warm food, you'll be able to pick yourself back up. I can feel it. Your body is shouting, I want to live. I'm a disgrace. I don't deserve to live. Is life something you have to earn? To deserve? Well... These feelings are natural. You eat when you're hungry, and cry when you're sad. Feeling these things is proof that we're alive. Alive? What's your name? Mine is Selica. Selica Crow. I'm an exorcist. Artoria. No, Arthur. I'm Arthur. Arthurius! <sighs> what in the world was that? Rokuro! Aizen! Uh. You saw it too, then? Sure did. Arturius, and he called himself Arthur. I've heard of this. The Earth and Historia. They say that events on the world's surface cast imprints on the Earth pulse that runs below. In other words, an illusion of the past. It's not an illusion. That was my sister. So, he managed to fool her too, is it? Yes. Yes, that must be it. That's why she freed me from the prison. Okay. Rokuro, have you recovered from your wounds? Yep. Tough as nails. That's old Rokuro. I'm more worried about Velvet. Is she okay? Uh, how could she be okay? Inominat is reborn, and it's her little brother. A blade can't just be hard. It's got to be flexible. Or it'll snap the first time it meets an unexpected force. I misunderstood the true meaning of strength, and so did he. Let's just worry about ourselves for now. 
This Earth Pulse is completely under Inominat's domain. We can think of it as an extension of his body. Yeah, which means my power won't get us out of here. Be wary. Inominat may be the one showing us these memories. Remember, he's after Velvet. And the two types of malevolence inside her. True. And we may be able to use that against him to get us out of here. What are you saying? Just use her? If it's necessary. We have to keep moving. Nothing will be gained by staying here. And we ought to look for Magilu. Even she doesn't deserve to be stuck here forever. Hey, a forward fucker. <laughs> you're getting into? So, what is this Earthen Historia you mentioned? As I've said, an Earth Pulse is a natural force that circulates within the land. Wind blows, water flows, birds fly, flowers bloom. All actions in nature leave their mark on the Earth Pulse. These marks become etched within the land itself, and remain a part of the Earth Pulse, like memories. So it's a record of the world's past. Does it remember human and Moloch deeds? Everything that occurs is part of nature, including the acts of humans, Malachim, and even demons. So that means that even this very conversation is being recorded in the Earth and Historia? Anything bad I've done in secret, any insults you've ever told behind someone's back, the land sees it all. My... insults? It's just an example. Pay it no mind. Does that mean that Inominat is drawing specific memories from the Earth and Historia and showing them to Velvet? I believe so. That's how Rokuro and I saw the same thing, even though we weren't there. With the Earth itself as his vessel, it's a trick only Inominat could pull off. Awfully devious for a self-styled Empyrean. But the attack did strike home. Keep a close watch on her until we're out of the Earth Pulse. Right. Okay. Velvet's psyche took a heavy blow there. Yes. She's in rough shape. How long do you think she'll last? What do you mean? Just what I said. Remember, hardness alone won't save you from breaking. If she keeps being shaken up like this, she won't be able to handle it. But what can we do? If she breaks, she breaks. Until then, we go on with our mission. What? Can't we help her? If you let sympathy fog your vision, you can end up crashed on a reef. Even so, we can't just let her suffer. It's too much. I'm fairly sure that Velvet would say the same thing if she was in Aizen's place. And do you agree, Rokuro? Me? I still have a debt to Velvet. I will pay it. But in the end, 
Her fate will be something she'll have to decide for herself. That's true, but... Then I have a decision of my own to make. I won't give up on Velvet, no matter what. Power of friendship! Do what you have to. We won't stop you. I really kind of hate that kid. Oh, fuck you. Fucking past you, so I don't want to fucking bother with you. You're a waste of my time. Susan's just gonna stab me in the back if I walk past it. Figure I'd uh, take the initiative and stab it in the back instead. I'll cut down anyone in my way. Custom. And two paths. Let's go this way. Welcome home, Arthur. Hi, Celica. I fixed the fence around the house. Oh, thank you, sweetheart. With the brigands stepping up their attacks, the town elders have been worried. But this should put their minds at ease. No. If the brigands turn into demons, a mere fence won't stop them. Hmm? Nothing. Don't worry about it. I'm pretty confident in my carpentry. And the other two? Probably at the Cape again. I've warned them a hundred times that it's dangerous. Luffy said probably badgered Velvet into going. Don't worry, she'll watch out for him. Yeah. I can only hope that this little one grows up to be as strong as she is one day. Huh? Shit out of the way. You're happy, I hope. Of course I am. I, I never thought I could ever be this happy.
I... I only wish I'd known earlier. I would have made something even nicer for you. Oh, you made this for me? Yeah. I put all my heart into it. I'll cherish it always. It'll remind me of this happy day. Let this serve as proof of our love. This I swear. I swear to protect you both with my life. Eh. That's Lord Artorius's past. No shit. <laughs> Oh, that's rich! You mean you believe that tribe? It's all a pack of lies. His smile. His promise. Everything. The dragon looking thing? Oh, maybe not a dragon. Cat. Dragon cat. The dragon. What we just saw. Was that from before the opening? Yeah. Celica was there, and Artorius still had use of his arm. It didn't look like he was an exorcist either. I never would have thought Lord Artorius could smile so tenderly. But he's since become an exorcist, taking on the mantle of Shepherd and the weight of the world. All because he lost his beloved wife. I'd understand if you wanted to back out. But at this rate, I think the time is coming. Not much longer now. It's coming. Hey, goody. <sighs> to think I ate up his lies without questioning a word. What a joke. Death perception. This is way further away. You fuck you. Turn around, God damn it. Velvet didn't know those things about Artorius and Celica, did she? Probably not. That was when the two were alone and first getting to know each other. We were seeing glimpses of a warm, loving family. But really, it just gave me the creeps. Same here. I could keenly feel Inominat scheming behind everything we saw. He's trying to get at Velvet. I think she used to truly love Lord Artorius. Having that happy past thrust in front of her at a time like this must be tearing her apart. Probably, but a demon like me wouldn't understand. What Velvet is going through is horrible. Even as a human, I can scarcely imagine what it must be like. But I approach it just a little bit, because like her, I was his pupil. 
Artorias said he needed two types of malevolence to awaken an Ominat. The illusions at a ball, making sure we knew about the attack on Titania, and Inominat appearing as her brother. If all of that was planned to extract the malevolence from her, we'd all better brace for worse to come. Okay. Don't notice me, don't notice me. Fuck. We will need to be extremely wary. No mercy! Wounds that won't heal! Hard to the floor! Sleep the pain! Now it's gonna be them fucking. The Scarlet Knight? This is Felvet's village. Damn! So many of them! Sadaka, I'm coming! It's too late! Take Velvet and Lafayette and run! I can't do that! I want to have my life with you! With our child! No! Arthur! That was really stupid. Particularly stupid. Why? Bad writing, that's why. Couldn't I? Why couldn't I protect my own family? Remember this moment well, Artorius. Humans are weak, filled with sin. Malkior. The people of this village offered you and your beloved family up to the demon brigands. A sacrifice, so that they could escape and hide. No, they wouldn't. It happens often. The reason people act on is burdened by the weight of their sins. However... I have found a method to adjust their reason. A domain? What is this incredible power? Don't tell me the Empyrean we've been searching for was here this whole time. <sighs> These... Malachim... So they have been reborn. But be not deceived. They are not the same people you knew. Huh. It wasn't Lapiset. It's his unborn kid. Close Why? enough. Why must fate be so cruel? 
It appears that Inominat's resurrection is incomplete. We must guide him until we understand why. I'll be taking these Malakim. Wait! I'm sorry I couldn't keep my promise. I'll make things right. I'll abandon who I am. Nameless Moloch. I will forge a pact with you. I will put an end to all the pain in this world. Do you have it in you? You who abandoned my friend's ideals and fled. On the souls of my dead master, wife, and child. This, I swear. My name is Artorius Colbrand. I have inherited the will and the strength of Claude in Asgard, former head of the Exorcists. Very well. Let tonight's tragedy change fate and birth. Salvation. That Moloch, it was me. You yep. don't remember? You had a little Not abortion. They said you were reborn as a Moloch. That means. Wait, what exactly? The soul of a human who passed away can, given the right trigger, be reborn as a Moloch. You're saying that Artorius' child was reborn as Lafayette? If what we saw was real, yes. <laughs> uh, so the female Moloch that was born along with him was... My sister's reincarnation. But I ate her long ago. You... you didn't know, right? I knew. I had already caught on to who Ceres really was. Velvet. And it was but a blood several matter. times throughout the story. What does it change? I'll devour anything to fulfill my goal. My sister, my brother, even the world. That's who I am. That's all I am. That was the day all of this started, wasn't it? Yeah, the opening. Inominat was halfway revived and demons became visible to all. His power also robbed almost every Moloch of their free will that day. I never imagined that Lord Artorius' quest to change the world was so steeped in tragedy. The villagers should have never sold them out to those bandits. It was cruel, yes, but nothing remarkable. People are capable of anything when under pressure. Even more so when they can do it under the mantle of the greater good. Velvet's family was probably the furthest outside the village circle that night. That's pure selfishness. Humans are selfish creatures. You should be aware of that by now. That's why you said what you said just now, even if you didn't know it. Artorius's quest to change the world, not Artorius's quest to save humanity. <sighs> uh, I... I mean no disrespect. It's just an observation. A man with the power to change the world turned his back on the potential of humanity. That may be the biggest tragedy of that night. Uh -huh. The savior of the world lost all hope in its people. Oh, I'm making me get in fights. I don't even have my full party. Come 
I'll cut down anyone in my way! Better piece of armor, but skill learning speed is useful. No other armors, right? Basically, long term investment versus immediate gratification. I want to go with immediate gratification at this point. Close to the end, I would think. And after this, let's go back to the big thing, the cathedral, and fight the final fight there. Aizen, you said a human soul can be reborn as a Moloch given the right trigger, right? Is that something? That happens frequently? I'm afraid I don't have an answer for that. We know that humans are sometimes reborn as Malachim, but not how or why. It's more likely among people with greater resonance, but the process is still a mystery. Huh. So it's not something that happens or that can be made to happen easily, ordinarily at least. But Velvet's sister was reborn as Ceres, and her unborn child came back as Lafayette. What are the chances of that? It might not have been chance. They both died on the Scarlet Night. Their rebirths may have been influenced by the sacrificial ceremony. Are you saying that Inominat made it happen on purpose? Call yeah. it an educated guess. But I don't think even an Empyrean can control the lives of humans or Malachim at his whim. If it wasn't chance, it might have been destiny. Velvet said she ate Ceres. Her own sister reborn as a Moloch. Oh, it's such a right horrible into the thing mic. be destiny! Sorry, I didn't mean to make light of a tragedy, Kitty. but our fates intertwine, the good yeah. and the bad, whether we like it or not. That's what makes it destiny, right? True, mm, but problem. this... Get a hold of yourself, Eleanor. Velvet and Lafayette are in rougher waters than any of us. They'll be looking to you to light their way. Yes, I must remain calm and steady. Oh. Like somebody needs attention, so it's time for a break. Pretty sure that meow had to be picked up on the mic. She basically meowed right into it. Anyway, it's a uh, break time. <laughs>